Because sometimes we're going to see that there was very bad leadership. Sometimes it was really good leadership, and it didn't always mean based on the leadership that the people behaved, but generally speaking, the people followed the leadership. When there was a good king, they generally did things right. When there was a bad king, they generally did things wrong. We're going to see that as we go through the, the book of Judges into some of the other places, but we're going to see that leadership has an important role here. It's given to the leadership. The leadership then reads it before the people, and all the people say amen, and they go ahead and decide they're going to keep it or not. That's always been the way it's been, been played out. And we see that right here. So Moses takes that Torah, and he gives it to the, list, the leadership at the time. And I like the idea, this idea that they didn't just carry it. I mean, I know you can think, okay, they picked it up and they carried the, the Ark of the Covenant. But they had a burden of bearing the Ark. This is a burden of leadership. So the leadership is to read this in front of the people. Now the people, having heard it, will know if they've been being shared it correctly. See, a lot of you, once you got yourself a Bible and had started reading it yourself and were sitting there in your churches that you used to go to, and all of a sudden you might go, well, wait a minute, it doesn't say what he just said. And so now you start to gain an understanding because you have access well, this was to make sure the people had access. They had to read it once every seven years at the minimum just to make sure that everybody got to hear it to know whether or not what was going on was in line with the book. And he says, look, I would love to take you as my people, but this is what I expect. And by the way, what I expect is not burdensome. It's not hard. And actually will bring you blessing and make your life safer and will help transform you in your character. Wow, what a horrible dictator he is, huh? <laughs> Giving us all these horrible things to do that are going to bless us, keep us safe, and change us into him. This is the same thing Chava was doing in the garden. Why are we looking out after other things, thinking somehow they're going to make life better or be the answer to something? He is the answer to everything. Get that into your head. Get it into your heart and walk, walk on that path. But you see, they're going to see people doing other things and go, well, that looks fun. Well, that looks good. Well, that seems to work. And look at how prospering they seem to be doing, all that prosperity. Maybe we should be doing what they're doing. And by the way, when I say desire it on that level, I mean that means the fullness of it. It means that you have to still learn how to treat each other so that you can't be so focused on studying and learning Torah that you neglect your family, you neglect your job. Remember, it's the fullness of Torah we're talking about here which is how you love each other and how you love him and finding that balance that he instructs us to have. Because you can become so totally book-focused and vertically focused and trying to study that you're actually not walking this out like you should. See, now people read that witness against and then they start into this whole Melchizedekian teaching that's out there thinking that somehow these are laws that were against us and it's evil stuff. No, the witness is against you, saying, if you do this, you can't say, well, I didn't know. So it's not that it in itself is against you. It's there to be held as a standard for you to be measured against. And you can't say, but I didn't know. And evil shall come to you in the latter days because you do what is evil in the eyes of Yahweh. You're probably not doing evil in your own eyes. Generally speaking, we don't. We're not evil people the way we normally would think of it. We're not overtly, openly trying to do what we would think of as evil. But that's according to your standards or your culture's standards where we live. But what about in the eyes of Yahweh? But are we going to accept that reality? Are we going to listen to all the bashing that's out there about leadership and structure and how, oh, no, we're not supposed to be organized and we're not supposed to go meet in buildings? I don't know. It says in Acts that they go to the synagogue on the Sabbath and hear Moses preached. Nobody said, shame on you for meeting in synagogues. In other words, organized buildings. Yes, some of the people met in houses when there wasn't a building to go to. Oh, but we've been abused in buildings and organized structures before, so therefore the system must be the problem. We'll throw it out. So nobody should ever get married, because that clearly doesn't work. More than half the people end up in divorce. 
And nobody should have children because we know that doesn't always work. I mean, let's just throw out everything because it doesn't work right. Why do you have to keep behind it? So that you keep your distance of respect, awe, and reverence for that is in front and I am back here. I'm not equal to it. I'm not above it. I shouldn't be in front of it. I don't deserve to be even next to it. I need to follow it. Thank <laughs> you.